Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Don't fall. Action potential arrives at the motor neuron, triggering the release of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is released through the motor neuron and binds to the receptors on the motor end plate. This then allows sodium to go into the cell. Muscle action potential travels down the T-tubules, where calcium is then released from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Gates in the sarcoplasmic reticulum open as the calcium diffuses out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum down to the sacromere. Calcium then binds to troponin on the thin filaments. Troponin tropomyosin changes shape and exposes the active site on the actin filaments where the myosin head binds. The myosin head must have an ATP molecule bound to it to initiate the contraction process. The myosin head is now into an extended high energy position. The high energy myosin head now binds to the exposed active site on the thin filament, forming a cross bridge. Myosin releases the ADP and the phosphate and now flexes into a bent low energy state, tugging the thin filament along with it. This is called the power stroke. The myosin head remains bound to actin until it binds to another ATP. After binding more ATP, myosin releases the actin and the calcium leaves the active site binding to a protein called callosquestrin and is stored in the terminal cisternae until the fiber is stimulated again. Tropomyosin then moves back into the original position, blocking the active site of the actin filament. Awesome.